Hello and welcome back to the second video in our embryology series. In the previous video, we talked about the basic embryology in the first three weeks after conception. We talked about the formation of the blastocyst, the bilamina and trilamina discs, and finished with the genesis of the notochord. Let's look at the current situation. From a longitudinal section of the embryonic disc, we can see the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. We can see the notochord, which is formed from ectoderm cells infiltrating the mesoderm to form a hollow tube. In the previous video, we mentioned the notochord induces other changes in the embryo, and the first is related to the mesoderm. Let's look at this from a transverse perspective. As the notochord forms and elongates longitudinally, the adjacent mesoderm multiplies to form three longitudinal parallel columns either side of the notochord. These are called the paraxial mesoderm, the intermediate mesoderm, and the lateral mesoderm. We will come on to their significance later. Let's go back to a bird's eye perspective looking down on the embryonic disc from the direction of the amniotic cavity so we can see the ectoderm. Growth factors secreted by the axial mesoderm act on the overlying ectoderm, causing ectoderm cells overlying the notochord and axial mesoderm to differentiate into neuroectoblast cells. This thickened layer of neuroectoblast cells is called the neural plate. The cranial end will become the brain and the caudal end will become the spinal cord. As the neural plate elongates, the embryonic disc becomes stretched with a wider end that will become the head and a thinner end that will become the body. Let's go back to the transverse section. As it forms, the neural plate sinks along the midline to form the neural groove, flanked on either side by neural folds. At the 25th day, the folds actually touch each other, forming a tube. This is called the neural tube. The cells of the neural tube will become all the matter in the spinal cord. Let's go back to the bird's eye view. The neural folds merge first in the middle of the embryonic disc and then spread both cranially and caudally like a zip. If this process does not occur correctly, spina bifida will result and there will be an entire video dedicated to this. This whole process is called neurulation. Looking at it from the transverse perspective again, in the neural tube, the dorsal portion is called the alar plate and will form the sensory area of the spinal cord. The ventral portion is termed the basal plate and forms the motor area of the spinal cord. During neurulation, some cells break off from the dorsal aspect of the neural tube. These are called neural crest cells and form the sensory neurons of the dorsal root ganglia. Neural crest cells extend axons both centrally and peripherally, explaining why we find pseudo-unipolar neurons in the dorsal ganglia. On the other hand, motor axons just extend from neurons in the alar plate. Earlier in this video, we talked about the formation of the paraxial mesoderm. As the mesoderm develops, it becomes segmented. Axons extend peripherally from the neural crest cells and alar plate, growing into the adjacent segment of mesoderm, forming, forming a structure called a somite. The paraxial mesenchyme will become, amongst other organs, the axial skeleton and the striated muscle below the head. With this knowledge, it is clear why the adult body has myotomes and dermatomes, as each pair of somites will develop into a myotome or dermatome. In other words, the segmentation of the paraxial mesoderm results in the segmentation of the spinal cord, explaining why different muscle groups are bound to certain spinal levels. In this video, we have discussed the spinal cord. In the next, we will discuss the development of the brain. Subscribe to Sultan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.